What's up, tribe? How you guys doing? Go ahead and hit that subscribe button, and I hope you like this video. This is going to be your review <clears throat> for The Real Housewives of New Jersey, Season 3, Episode 5. So let's get into it. So we, um, what did I just do? Oh, I hit the wrong button. Okay, so we have, um... Melissa and Joe, they are down at their house, and child Melissa is singing. And she is singing Amazing Grace. And Joe is like, oh, my gosh, that is so beautiful. You're such a great singer. Like, you really, you really should, you should, why don't, why don't you pursuing your singing? Now, we found out that Melissa has been singing her whole life, that she used to sing when she was younger. Her father was sort of like her biggest support, her rock. Um, she told us in the last episode, I don't think I really said it. She told us in the last episode that her father... You know, um, he passed away when she was younger. Um, you know, of course, that's something that she still processes and deals with or what have you. Um, and so Joe was like, yeah, I'm going to help you. I'm going to help you do this. And so later on in the episode, we see Joe get her like a songwriter and she's actually working on a single. Again, y'all, I know it's easy to see this in hindsight. It's easy to look back on it from you know, the vision that I have now, but that scene just was so, it was just so disingenuous, right? I get it. That's her storyline. I get it. But it was just like, Joe was just like, oh my gosh, you just sing so beautiful. And I'm like, child, she's singing Amazing Grace. Girl, go sit down somewhere. But anyway, child, go ahead with that. So then we see Caroline playing golf with, um, with her husband. Is it Walter? Is that his name? I feel like that's not his name. But anyway, with her husband. Um, and she's having empty nest syndrome. I mean, the, you know, the boys are gone, you know, it's just her, her husband and the daughter and the daughter got a whole boyfriend that she probably ain't even home half the time. And so she's definitely dealing with empty nest and she's trying to figure out what she wants to do next. Um, and so she's decided that she wants to try to do a radio show and talk about her family, you know, give advice. She already has the column, you know, back in the day, you know, the reality stars used to have to do a blog and it sounds like Carolyn had a, a own separate, like, family advice column i think it was called caroline's rules or something like that um and so um uh, and so we see later on in the episode she actually does have a meeting with the radio station and they do actually um Tell her that, you know, that this is something they would be considering. It looks like it's like a small radio station in the, in the area, in New Jersey. Um, and they're actually looking forward to it, right? So that was cute. You know, it looks like Caroline is working on, you know, doing some things for herself or what have you. Now, over to Jacqueline's house. Listen, Jacqueline and Chris and Ashley. Chris has decided that he's going to get Ashley a car, right? But here's what Chris has decided. Chris has decided that he's going to get Ashley the car. He's going to pay like the first, I think he said the first six payments or something. And then after that, she's on her own. And if she screws it up, he's going to take it back. And basically they're going to do what they did with the last car, which is sell it. But he wants Jacqueline to co-sign for the car. See here, I got a couple of issues with this. Issue number one, I don't even have a problem with them giving her a second chance. Like kids grew up. I don't even have a problem with that. The problem I have is... Why do y'all need to buy her a car when she needs a car note? If you know, right now the girl don't even have a job. Buy her a car, like you can outright pay for her. I mean, that was 10 years ago. Y'all could have gotten her a decent car for $10,000. You can get a decent used car now for 10, well, you know, not decent as you know. But 10 years ago, y'all could have paid cash for a ten to $12,000 car. A decent used car make sure it was in good condition and let her drive that around for a year or so and then if she does what she's supposed to do she sticks by she stick she sticks by it then let's talk about co-signing on a real car for her second of all why Jacqueline got to do it if you gonna pay if you if this was your bright idea and you're gonna pay the note for the first six months why Jacqueline got to co-sign for the damn car? So later on in the episode, we see them go to the Jeep dealership. I feel like Chris knows somebody at this dealership. He might, he must know the owner because the last car was from the Jeep dealership. But anyway, and yes, Jacqueline co-signed for this brand new Jeep for Ashley to drive off. The, I mean, literally she drove it off the showroom floor. I was like, you know what? 
again, hindsight is 2020. I'm on the outside looking in. But that girl didn't need no brand new car. It didn't. Then y'all wouldn't have to worry about, you know, Jacqueline is sitting there being annoying Jacqueline. Are you sure? You understand how serious this is? You know if you don't do right, we're going to take the car. You know you have to do this. You know, like, I, look, I get it. Y'all know I've been calling Ashley all kinds of brats. But girl, she, Jacqueline, you be getting on my nerves some, sometime, okay? And speaking of people who get on my nerves, the next thing we see is Teresa with the kids and Joe, her husband, Joe. Well, her brother, uh, Gorga calls and they have a conversation where he wants to go to, he's asking for permission to go to Gia's gymnastic meet. So Teresa, I feel like Teresa couldn't just let that moment be a moment. She was just like, well, you know, you can always come. I mean, you know what her meets are. I mean, Gia, Gia really wants you to come. Yeah, Gia's crying. Oh, my gosh, this is so sweet. Okay, you know what time, right? Make sure you're there. Okay, so so when are we going to talk? You know what? We need to talk, too. Okay, all right. And I was like, okay, Teresa, like, baby steps, girl. Baby steps. Now, that wasn't even that serious as what the actual, when they get to the actual gymnastics meet, I'll get to that in a second. Because Teresa got on my last nerve that whole moment. But I'm going to get there in a second. Now, over to Kathy's house, we see her with her kids. And she makes them sign contracts basically saying what they're going to do and, you know, the rules they're going to follow or whatever. The son is hilarious. Because the son was like, listen. I'm doing this contract situation. I'm going through all of this with you. Uh, but I need y'all to understand that. You do know that when I get into the 11th grade, I'm probably going to have a drink or two on a Friday night. Like, y'all y'all really, y'all probably do understand that. Like, I'm sitting here saying that I will never, you know, drive drunk and I will never do this and do that. But you know I'm probably going to do it right. I said, I know that's right. You better let them know that you are, that you are, that you're going to break the rules. And the father was like, well, you know, I can't really say nothing because, hell, you know, I, I did the same thing in high school, too. And the son was like, exactly. And Kathy is sitting there like, are you serious right now? I am, I am cracking up because I feel like the son is like, listen, I, I'm doing all of this, but you, you, you know that this is some bullshit. We found out later on in the episode that her daughter actually had a brain tumor um, when she was, I think she said what they said when she was 14. And so she said, you know, Kathy said, you know, and Teresa was there, and we went through all of that together. She was at the hospital. She was there. She was supportive. And I really just want us to get back to that place. Like, I, and I understand how serious this is. You know, like, your kids are here today and gone tomorrow. She said, you know, my kids are really good. You know, brother and sister, they have a really good brother and sister relationship, and I would never, ever, ever want them to not be in a good place. And so it just breaks my heart when I see Teresa and Joe just in this bad space, and I want to help I want to be there as much as I can. And it just really, really hurts. All right, Kathy Child, girl, whatever. So, so we get to this gym, the gym, Gia's gymnastics meet, right? And uh, Gorga is late. Right, Gia is looking for him the whole time. Gia is messing up. She missed her vault. She fell off the balance beam. She didn't get as high of a score on her un her um uneven bars as she normally does. Child, we didn't even get to see her floor exercise. And Teresa is like, oh my gosh, she usually does better. She's looking for her uncle Joe. She's looking for her uncle Joe. That's why she's doing so bad. She's looking for her uncle Joe. So Joe and Melissa get there and they late, child. Now they say they had the wrong time, which. At this point, I don't know whether I believe it or not. I, I want to think that they didn't purposely show up at the end. Because, like, by the time they got there, the girls were getting their awards. And they had to have been there for a good hour or so. Because, you know, in a gymnastics, um, all of the teams have to rotate to all four apparatuses. Like, that takes a minute. That's not something that happens overnight. And so, it had to be something that, anyway... And Teresa is like, oh my gosh, Joe, I can't believe that you're late. Like, didn't I tell you the time? Didn't you remember the time? You know that, like, you don't have to wait for me to invite you. You can come whenever you want to come. Oh my gosh, Joe's late. Oh my goodness, why did Joe get here so late? Joe, you know you were late. Gia didn't do well because she was looking for you. I mean, basically, it's your fault that Gia didn't do good. She normally does better, but she just was nervous today. She just was off. And then here comes Gia. 
as soon as she sees Joe, she runs over and she says, I've been looking for you. I've been nervous all the time. And Teresa was like, is that why you didn't do good? Is that why you didn't do good? Because you were looking for your Uncle Joe? She was like, yeah, I was looking for my Uncle Joe the whole time. Yeah, uh, I normally do better, but I was just nervous you had. And I was like, so I feel like Joe was making a baby step and he couldn't even get in the door good. And it was like, you screw up, you ruin the whole thing. And this is probably the first time in these last five episodes where I really have any sympathy for Joe. And I honestly, in that moment, I had some sympathy for Joe. Because I was like, damn. Okay, I get it. He was late. Valid. But y'all gonna blame everything on him now? And Teresa just wouldn't stop. It's like, and Teresa's a, she does that. She does that to her husband. You know, she just, it's like that nah, nah. She's a nag. You know, and she did it to Joe. And she was like, um, he was like, all right, well, you know, me and you, you know, we need to, um, let's meet, let's meet for, you know, dinner or whatever. She was like, okay, all right, where are we going to meet? Okay, where are we going to meet? Um, and he said he would tell her where or whatever. So they were getting ready to leave. And he was talking to his mom and he was, his mom had like something for the girls. And he was like, well, why don't you go over there? And I think for the daughter. And he was like, she's in the car. Like, why don't you come over and give it to her yourself? And she was like, she was like, no, you give it to her. You give it to her. And like, later on, we see Melissa is upset. Melissa is crying and Melissa is upset. And again, and the girls are upset because the girls were playing. And when it was time to leave, like they didn't understand why they couldn't play longer. Why they don't get to see each other as much, you know. And of course, because the adults aren't getting along. And something Melissa said, and again, this was the first time that I had a little sympathy for Melissa. Melissa was like, they treat me like I'm invisible and they treat me like I am the problem. And they don't understand that you're the reason you don't speak to them because you don't want to speak to them. I'm trying to encourage you to have a relationship with your family. But she was like, they don't speak to me. It's like, I don't exist. It's like, I'm a ghost. Like your mom, she didn't even say goodbye to me. She just left. Like Teresa, you know, she spoke, but then that was it. Like there was no interaction. There was no conversation. Everything was Joe, 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 Joe. And, you know, again, I see how that could make her feel. Again, I'm not negating that Melissa probably got some stuff with her too. But this was the first time I saw how this could be on both ends. Does that make sense? Anyway, child, that was pretty much the episode. The next episode, I guess we're going to have to sit down with Teresa and Joe. Where they're going to finally sit down and talk this out or again or whatever. Anyway, let me know what you guys think. I'll talk to y'all later. Peace.